This is every feature we'd love to see return to Minecraft. How do you craft a golden apple? Well, that's true, but that's not how it always was. Since when the enchanted golden apples were added back in 1.3.1, you could originally craft these out of eight golden blocks in an apple. Now, in fairness, there wasn't the kind of gold farms that we had now back then, so they were renewable, but they were still ridiculous to get. There even used to be an achievement for this when you crafted it. You know, back when they were called achievements, it would give you the overpowered achievement. But as soon as the snapshots for 1.9 rolled around, this feature was removed, which was a pretty big bummer, especially because it was bundled with the fact that regular golden apples got a more expensive recipe as well, going from nuggets to ingots. And for a while, that's just how it was. This was supposed to be one of the rarest items in the game. But with things like ancient city chests, you're able to find quite a lot of these. So if they were meant to be rare and now they're not as much, I don't get why the crafting recipe isn't there anymore. It'd be a nice feature to return, especially since people go out of their way to download this through vanilla tweaks. And it just seems obvious. What happens when you take a screenshot in Minecraft? You're probably expecting something like this, or more likely some mistake one like this. But for a brief time during the in-dev phase of Minecraft, there was actually a way to take an isometric screenshot that would look like this. And when you press the F7 key, it would save the current location of all the mobs and then show any alterations to the map that you had made. And while there are some mods that let us do the same thing, like the isometric renders mod, it would be really cool to see this come back into the base game, especially since we're able to build way more impressive things than we could back in the in-dev phase. And also, there's a lot of function keys at the top of the keyboard that still aren't doing anything in Minecraft. Seems like a good excuse to bind it to one of those. On this channel, we've often talked about how lame the cauldron is, and I'll still stick by that. But what makes this even more hurtful is the fact that the cauldron could have been so much better, since one of the features that Mojang removed from Minecraft was the plans for an advanced potion system. And with this idea, we could have made a lot more modifications to the potions that we're used to, instead of just adding redstone for duration and glowstone for potency. And until we see changes like the ones that were shown off in the combat test snapshot, I think the best we're gonna see for a while is just changing the potion colors like they did in the last update. Which is nice, but it could have been so much cooler. And hopefully it still will. If you look at the original sprite file for the items.png that used to be in Minecraft, what you notice is quite a few items that were textured but never added to the game fully. And among those was the quiver, which had its origin in the Legend of the Chambered game that Notch had made prior. And more interestingly is that this wasn't just a forgotten thing. Since on the 22nd of January in 2010, the texture was actually flipped to be a mirrored version. So they didn't forget about it until of course they switched the way that Minecraft worked entirely with the resource pack update and that meant we lost the quiver. That was until Dinnerbone tweeted out these two screenshots. One showing the quiver being used in survival and another one showing in the creative inventory. So it seemed like they even planned to add it in with the new tipped arrows. But again, after 1.9 fully came out, there was no mention of this anymore. But with inventory management being such a big problem for Minecraft, having a different way to hold extra arrows on hand without having to clog up your inventory, I think that's still worth exploring. You ever realize that Minecraft used to feel quite a bit scarier? Well, that's not just your imagination and nostalgia blindness, but part of that could also be features like void fog getting removed in recent updates. Truly, the lower that you got down to the world, when you eventually reached the bedrock floor, you would have this huge dark fog clogging up your vision, which created a really great spooky atmosphere when you're down there branch mining. But in 2014, most Mojang removed the void fog, saying that it was supposed to help improve performance. But now that there's a lot more people to help out optimizing Minecraft, and a lot more performance mods even if they don't, I think it'd be nice to see this return in some official capacity, even if it's just an option that you can turn off in accessibility. Speaking of removing features because they caused a lot of lag, did you know that mobs used to be scared of creepers? Sure enough, when there was a creeper that was ready to explode, early versions of the game would see other hostile mobs run away from the creeper, which was a fun little detail. But the way they went about implementing it was a little silly, since the way that it was coded, each mob would be checking for an exploding creeper near them every single tick, which is a lot of updates to send out. And really, I'm surprised there wasn't a simpler way to do that. Just have the creeper, when it's ready to explode, send a tag out to other nearby hostile mobs in a certain radius, and then they can get scared. That way, it's reactive instead of proactive. But apparently, it was just easier to remove this entirely. Though, I would still like to see it return, and hopefully better coded. Before the so-called flattening, there are ways to give yourself special six-sided blocks through give commands in Minecraft. And while some of these have been added in official capacity, such as the six-sided logs of the smooth stone block, I think it'd be great to see something like the six-sided piston return as an official capacity. Maybe it's a crate block. Or if you want to add in extra redstone functionality, you could use this as a way to extend the piston push limit past 12 blocks. I don't know, I just think it would be cool to see these features that were historic in some Minecraft
Minecraft player's journey return officially, especially if they've already picked a few of them to do this with. It's only in recent years that Twitch and Minecraft have become a lot more synonymous, at least in a cultural sense. Because really, back in 2013, there was a native way to integrate your Twitch.tv account directly into Minecraft. You could literally broadcast out of your Minecraft without the need for OBS, and have your Twitch chat show up as if it was a regular chat message. It's a weird idea to say the least, and I can get why the feature was removed back then, but with things like Minecraft Championship and the Dream SMP really making Twitch and Minecraft more of a household thing together, I think it would be a fun idea. Especially if they do something like this game called Choice Chamber, where your chat can actually choose to summon in things through the game. There's been plenty of unofficial mods that have done this, so having an official way to do this, especially if they already have some of the code, that would be awesome. In a brief period between Minecraft 1.9 to 1.10, there existed a bug called Piston Translocation, which is that if the piston arm extended into you and then retracted, it could pull you up through the piston, which when that existed allowed for some incredibly fast and impressive elevators. I mean, really, the ways that this let you manipulate entities was pretty impressive, but now it just doesn't work the same. Not only was the bug patched out, but now if you have a piston push you down, it pushes you into crawling. And I think having some way for this feature to return would be really cool. Maybe even taken after this Reddit post and saying that it should be a translocator block. I don't know, I think it'd be neat. Creative mode's supposed to let you do anything in Minecraft, but even then, there's still been some features that we've lost along the years. One of which was the ability to have nether and end portal blocks inside of your inventory in creative mode. I mean, you're able to do a set block command and summon in another portal like this without the actual portal frame, so why are we not then allowed to place down that same block if we had it in our inventory? And to make matters even funnier, through the use of a glitch like this that we've shown off in the past, in Bedrock Edition, you're actually able to get a portal block as an item in survival. And that seems a lot more broken than this fix that they added then. So I think at least seeing it come back to creative would be a nice middle ground. When I say the phrase audio loops, what do you think of? Well, probably TikTok, but these actually existed in Minecraft well before TikTok was even a thing. See, if you go into the game's old files, you can find these dormant sounds that exist in the folder. And these were meant to play as ambiance in different locations, some of which that will play here. Those being things like birds chirping, chimes that would play when you were in caves, and even adding in specific sounds for something like a waterfall, which makes it a lot more exciting than just seeing a one block water source hanging out of the side of a cave. Especially with all the changes that we got to world generation and the wild update in the caves and cliffs. And honestly, I would much rather have caves sound like this than the spooky cave sounds that we get otherwise. <laughs> I'm not past substitution. Zombie pigmen are gone, because these mobs that we find now in the nether, they're zombified piglins. Which I know seems like splitting hairs, but it is unfortunate for how iconic this original design was to have no way to actually put it back into the base game. And maybe having a way to put one of these properly into your world would be a nice touch. Kind of like using a name tag on a rabbit to get the special toast variant. If we were able to name a zombified piglin the same way, that'd be a good chance for us older players to experience the olden days. Without having to look at the old netherrack texture, might I add, because that should definitely stay dead. And with all the changes that Minecraft's gotten to its world generation, it's odd that they would remove this one. See, for a time, if you were to create a new world in Minecraft, then mixed in there with the amplified and super flat world types, there did exist one called Customized. And this gave you a lot of variation to how you made your world generate, being able to change things like the ores, the sea level, and even what structures generated where so you got some really crazy results. And honestly, it wouldn't be Mojang's first time adding these back, since while they were initially added for 1.8, they did get removed in 1.13. That was until Snapshot 20W21A, where they were added back in. Except for now, we've got no in-game way to actually modify the world menus. And the only way that you do it is by importing a custom JSON file. Which, if you're gonna add it in that much, why not just give us full control in the game? I don't know, I think it would make it more accessible. This isn't Steve, but rather, it's the old human mob that used to exist in Minecraft. And folks, used to is an understatement. This was in the game a long time ago, which means that it also got removed pretty early on to the game's development. And while I'm not saying that we should have to encounter these in survival, I do think that having one of these accessible through creative commands could be a really nice way to open up map makers to some new possibilities. What I'm saying is that I've played way too many custom maps that use armor stands for basically the same thing. So if we could instead use NPCs that actually look like players, I think that would be a welcome change. But if you bring them back, also make sure that they move around less janky, because if they look like this, I'd rather stick to the static statues. This is dirt, and this is grassless dirt, but that's actually the point, since while there's no way to prevent a regular block of dirt from getting grass grown on top of it, the special grassless dirt variant allows map makers to actually have a variation of dirt that they don't have to worry about keeping it separate and quarantined from the other grass blocks. And now, I know, there is coarse dirt, but that itself has a different texture, which doesn't so much solve the problem as it does just brush it under the rug. And since this version of dirt already already existed with old commands, I think adding it back in with the help of NBT data would be a nice middle ground for the more recent versions. In 1.72, Mojang added in the super secret settings to Minecraft, and I 
guess they were so much of a secret that they would go on to remove them in 1.9. But what did this do? Well, when you press the button, it would actually put different shader effects onto your world. And while a lot of those were pretty trippy and far from usable, what this did hint at was the idea of having actual shader support built into Minecraft, which would be a really nice option to have, especially for players on consoles. So while I don't think we need all of the super secret setting filters added back in, I mean, some of them just look horrendous, I do think that if Mojang was gonna add proper shader support, then that's worth revisiting. Especially when Bedrock Edition has proper ray tracing. <laughs> Come on, that would just be so cool on Java. This screenshot is illegal in modern Minecraft, and it's nothing to do with what's in the picture, but rather, the picture itself. Since for only a brief time during Minecraft's history, there was an implementation where you were able to take 645 megapixel screenshots. And as Mumba put that into perspective, a 1080p screen is 2 megapixels. An 8K screen, that would be 33 megapixels. This $50,000 camera, that would be 400 megapixels. And Minecraft, still 245 bigger. That would have been a resolution of 36,450 by 17,700 pixels. And while you could only do this back in the beta versions, that might have been for good reason, because most one of these screenshots could take up 1.8 gigabytes of space. And most of the time, they didn't even work. And while I'm not saying I want to take screenshots that are that big, I do think that having the opportunity to take super high resolution screenshots in game would still be an awesome feature. Or even just being able to change our screenshot resolution anyway, much in the same way you can do with replay mod, that would be a welcome return. That puts the power back in the player's hands instead of accidentally filling up their hard drive when you press the F2 key. With five leather and three iron ingots, you can craft a saddle, or at least you used to be able to. And the same was true with being able to craft horse armor. But while those were added into the game for a brief time, they also were eventually removed. Which is just unfortunate. The horse already feels like a feature that doesn't get a lot of love, especially since the lights were added. And this just makes it even tougher. So seeing a way to craft this would be really cool in the newer versions, especially if we could add armor trims to our horse armor. That would just be awesome. Minecraft's textures have changed a lot over the years, but one of the most notable is when you look at the old wool colors. Now, while the dyes that we use on these pieces of wool haven't changed as much, we have had three different variations to how our wool blocks look. They looked like this before 1.4.2, this before 1.12, and how they look today. And while I get making the change of the other textures, I do think that some of these colors should still have their chance to shine. And who knows, maybe if we had a feature much like how we dye our leather armor, that would be a good middle ground to add these back in. That way, we still keep the colors that we're used to, and we gain the colors that only some of us are used to. The Farlands is one of the most famous bugs in history. Or I should say glitch, I guess the most famous bug would be like a bee or a mosquito or something. But for how short of a time this was in the game, it's amazing how much of an impact it leaves on players, even to this day. And so, while it's not possible to have the Farlands in your recent world, you can go out 30 million blocks and be greeted with nothing, I think the opportunity of having Farlands added in intentionally would be a great thing for us to see. Even if it was just a world type that you could choose. That way, you don't confuse new players who happen to stumble upon this in their survival world. And it would let a lot of fans experience the Farlands for themselves, instead of having to watch a YouTube video to get the experience. Minecraft villages today look very different from how they have in the past. And while a lot of those changes have been pretty good improvements, I do think it's weird that gravel roads were taken out entirely from villages. Now, don't get me wrong, in some cases, the path block can fit just fine. But in a desert or a snowy biome, not as much. And really, I think bringing back the gravel roads for cases like this would just make more sense. And it would help to give a little bit more variety to how these generate. Which, with how much more often villages generate since 1.14, it'd be nice to have a little variation so they don't get old as fast. Did you know that chests used to be a full block in size? Which not only looks weird to see today, but it also meant that we could place things like redstone and torches on top of the chests. And having the ability to do that in recent versions would be a really welcome change for redstone. And while barrels do serve as a middle ground for this, let's face it, you also can't use those for double chests. The only time you ever double barrels on a shotgun. So being able to mix all of this storage with all of this functionality from the past, I think that'd be fun to explore. For a brief time, Mojang added in the pickaxe block to Minecraft. And I mean, really brief. It was an April Fool's joke. But while it might have been added in as a gag in the vote update, the idea behind this feature might still hold some water. And being able to use a redstone block that could actually break blocks in front of it, that'd be something that the community's wanted for years. And the same also goes for its counterpart with the placing block. Which, if the pickaxe block was a left click function, this one functioned as the right click. And while they probably need to be rebalanced so that they weren't so crazy, I think that if Mojang ever decides to get rid of TNT duplication, throwing both of these in could be a way to ease the blow. The Morph mod is one of the most popular Minecraft mods in history. And for good reason, shapeshifting's fun. And Mojang must have known that, since they added in the potion of the entity in Snapshot 23W13A or B. Yeah, that's literally the name of it. It's an April Fool's joke, just stick with me. And while I think adding back in this potion in survival would be too much, just having the ability with commands to turn yourself into any other mob, that would be great for vanilla. And particularly great for all the channels that do 100 
100 days of living as a mob. Though if you do that, please just don't add any of the buff versions of those mobs. Those should only exist in YouTube thumbnails. Back during the development phases of Minecraft, Notch originally added these giant zombies to the game, and the idea is that these would function as some kind of boss when you saw them in the game. But that whole idea fell through. Though they weren't properly removed either. Since according to Notch, they were just too cool to remove. And honestly, I disagree, considering that the only time I've ever seen these in the game, they've never had AI, so they're basically just a big statue. Not to mention the fact that they only have 100 hearts of health, which did seem big at the time, but that's the exact same amount of health as the Iron Golem, which when you do a size comparison is not nearly as impressive. Don't go near this chicken, because as of the 2.0 update, chickens were a neutral mob, and they would even attack the player if they started to look at them, almost like an Enderman would. But even if that was the case, the chicken still seems like a pretty easy mob to deal with, so what's the problem? Well, the issue is that, much like Zelda, these could spawn reinforcements to come after you, which is simultaneously horrifying and hilarious. You've heard of hardcore mode, but what about super hostile mode? Strange as it may seem, this is actually a difficulty that Mojang made themselves. And in this, it would spawn several charged creepers, full armor zombie, and even skeletons around you just as soon as you took a chance by punching wood or crafting. And honestly, this sounds to me more like the custom game modes that Fundy makes than anything we'd ever seen in the base game. But if you were able to play this version of the game and get to the end, that'd be more than impressive. Are Minecraft bundles extinct? We honestly don't know. I mean, sure, they were added into the game in 1.17, but they still don't have a proper implementation. I mean, you can't even craft them. And now that we've gone two Minecraft updates since the future, that's still the case. And while this item does still seem useful, with the ability to let you stack up 64 items regardless of the item type, it was ultimately removed from the Caves and Cliffs Part 2. So is it extinct? Who knows? But is it forgotten? Well, not by the community, but maybe by Mojang. Now, when you break glass with your fist, it's supposed to drop nothing. So why does this work? Well, that's because using chemicals, we were able to create hardened glass. And with this, it'll take longer to break than normal glass, but it'll drop itself when broken by any tool or hand. And folks, it isn't just us who has trouble breaking this glass, but the creepers have issues too. Since even though a regular glass block has a blast resistance of 0.3, when we use aluminum oxide and boron trioxide to make hardened glass, now it's got a blast resistance of nine. Which just for perspective, makes that harder than any building block that isn't made out of obsidian. If you were to put ammonia and phosphorus inside of the lab table, then you can get this new item called Super Fertilizer. And from the name, you can probably guess what it does. What we've got here is a special kind of bone meal. And the easiest way to visualize it is that this works like bone meal used to back in 2012. Because if you use the super fertilizer, it'll instantly bring trees and crops to maturity. So you don't have to worry about a random chance of jumping up a stage. And also, if you were to try this on a grass block, then it'll grow more flowers in a bigger area than regular bone meal. Which makes bone meal seem pretty lame by comparison. If you play Minecraft on PC, you're probably not familiar with this. But for those of you who played Minecraft on console, console, this is instantly recognizable as the Minecraft tutorial world. And it's probably a bit nostalgic, because this hasn't been in the game since. But in this iconic world, you'd find the classic Minecraft logo built across the sky, with a whole bunch of tutorials underneath to teach you the details of Minecraft. But as charming as this was, it was removed from the game eventually. And now the only way to get it is by downloading a map. And uh, I guess if anyone should be happy this got removed, it would be me, but I'm a little sad to see this piece of Minecraft history go to the wayside. Ever since Minecraft's wild update, this popular feature no longer exists. But before 1.19, it was possible to upgrade your brightness from bright to super bright, considering that you could go into the game's files and just manually change the gamma settings. But I guess it does make sense that the same update that they added in, the deep dark, they would also remove this insane brightness option. It kind of removes the fun. And nowadays, the only way they're going to pull this off is by using one of the many mods out there that exist for a third party alternative. Now, from afar, these look like villagers, but up close, you can quickly realize that these are the new NPC mobs. And yeah, they're literally called NPCs. And here, we have the ability to customize these new characters in some pretty neat ways, such as giving them a custom name, choosing their appearance out of 20 different skins, and we can even let them create these dialog boxes by using attached commands. And luckily for us, and for the NPCs, they're invincible, so they're not to take any damage from any mobs or players that decide to get a little rowdy. And honestly, this is a feature that map makers in Java would kill for. And for that matter, they look a lot better than armor stands, so I hope we get them in the base game too. Every classroom's gonna have its own rules, and that's where the allow and deny blocks come in. Now, as you can guess by the name, these are blocks that you can set up as an educator to play specific areas where players can or cannot build. Think of it like selective spawn protection. And that way a teacher could set up a plot for their class to build, all without getting the classroom griefed. I think that's a fair trade-off. If you were somehow able to beat the one block at a time update, you'd find out that after breaking all the end crystals in the game, or by resummoning the dragon, you'd be able to ride the boss just by punching it, which was capable of letting us do some pretty wild things over here in the overworld. Which is good, because normally when you ride a dragon in the overworld, it 
doesn't do much. So this is a welcome change of pace. And if you were to ride the Ender Dragon down into the void, you'd find that in this update, it's a lot more forgiving. Now it teleports the player right up to build limit in the overworld, which is still gonna be hard to clutch, but you have a much higher chance of surviving if you're not instantly deleted in the black abyss. Minecraft's pigs have never been particularly fast, but that all changes when they get in the mud. See, taken after Minecraft Earth, this muddy pig variant loves to roam around in the mud found in swamps. And lucky for us, it moves pretty fast when it does, which means we can ride them for a new form of agile transportation. Or if that's still not cool enough for you, then just know that you can shear its tulip for some extra dye as well, giving us both a new farm and a new ride. This here is the camera, and what's unique about it is that it works as both an entity and an item in your inventory. And talking about the latter first, if you use it inside of your inventory, you can take a first person screenshot as you expect. But when you place it on the ground, then it'll become an entity and start to take photos from the camera's perspective. And it even tracks the player while you're walking around for the perfect shot. And I know, it does look intimidating, considering that it plays the same detonation animation as the TNT, but don't worry, it's completely safe. And once it gets the perfect shot, you can look inside your new portfolio item and see the different photos that it takes. Which, considering Bedrock doesn't have a screenshot functionality, I guess is the best we got. While Minecraft's textures have famously changed a lot, the game doesn't just look different, but it sounds different too. And nowhere is that more noticeable than if you take damage. Whereas now we're familiar with this damage sound effect, in the past, there was that classic sound effect where Steve would say, <laughs> and as charming as that is, it's easy to understand why it was eventually removed. This here is an ice bomb, and while it sounds cool, its use is even cooler, since with one of these, you're able to freeze water on impact. And since you can throw this like an egg projectile, you can even start to use this for your own kind of ice bomb parkour. Though, be careful when you try this, because it does have a cooldown like an ender pearl. And what's also interesting is that this is the only projectile that's capable of hitting an enderman. But the reason that it does is because there's no effect for getting hit by this. But it is worth mentioning that if you throw one of these while you're underwater, it'll collide with the water source block and encase you inside of ice, which might just offer you some ready-made protection while you're hiding away from a drowned. Did you know that you could ride a ghast? Well, kind of. Since in 2015, Mojang made it in such a way where you could get on a ghast, but you couldn't control it. And the same could be said about pigs, since there was no more carrot on a stick, so you couldn't choose where the pig wanted to go. Which is a bummer, but it turns out that without it, they're able to climb walls now, giving us the kind of spider pig that even Homer Simpson can appreciate. This is the deadliest rabbit in Minecraft, or at least it was the deadliest rabbit in Minecraft. But ever since 1.8, the killer bunny variant no longer has a chance of spawning. And the reason for this, according to Jeb, is that the joke's already been made to death, so it was then removed. Or should I say the spawning was then removed, because if you use the summon command, it is still possible to get. I just wouldn't recommend that you stand too close when you do. Minecraft Dungeons added in this mob called the Enchanter, and now we've added them to the base game. Here, this guy enchants nearby mobs to make them into more powerful versions, which is intimidating for sure, but I think it also adds a fun challenge to your next raid. And since they're not that threatening by themselves, it makes sense that they try and buff the nearby Vindicators to give you some more trouble. And I think that's a welcome change of pace for the next time you get the Bad Omen effect. This here is a balloon, but what might shock you is just how powerful this thing is. Because even though we can tie this entity to a wall or a fence to keep it grounded, it's when we tie it to a mob that it really starts to get silly. See, in the Education Edition, you can get these guys to lift right off the ground. But unfortunately, you can't attach these to monsters, so there goes the killing method. Method. But if it means anything, you can still pick up an iron golem, so that's kind of funny in its own right. And if you have yourself a bow and arrow or a trident, you can even shoot down the balloons to pop them. When dolphins were first added to Minecraft, they came along with a buck, which is that through special methods, you were actually able to equip armor onto dolphins. Granted, you wouldn't be able to see it since it didn't render on top of the mob, but if you tried to hit one of them, especially one with thorns, you'd notice that they'd actually have the armor and its effects. And then if you killed the dolphin, it'd even drop the armor as well. But this was eventually removed and it hasn't been in the game since, which is maybe just to keep us from doing a cruel joke of giving a dolphin Frostwalker and uh, watching whatever kind of horror unloads. And on top of modifying the building permissions, there's also a way to modify other permissions using the new slash ability command. With this, an admin can give players certain permissions just to that player. Well, that's the world builder permission so they can build wherever they want, or you can give them the ability to fly with the may fly command. And finally, you can give them the ability to mute another player, which might be helpful if someone's talking during a lesson. And with the way these work, these abilities end up being similar to game rules, except they'll only apply to one player instead of the entire server. Though, even if you do get the ability to fly from your teacher, that's not gonna help you out with these border blocks, since these blocks are capable of preventing a player from leaving or 
are entering a specific area. And unlike the barrier blocks in Java, these have a range of influence that extends both up and down infinitely. So you can't just dig under them. But it is worth noting that even though you can't dig through or under these, if you have yourself an ender pearl or chorus fruit, you can still teleport through them. Just don't get suspended if you try that, okay? Minecraft villagers used to look like this. See, back in 2010, a player suggested adding in pigmen as NPCs into the game. And for a time, these were the things that were planned to live in the villages, instead of the Squidwards that we all know today. But even though that got shelved, the idea of a zombie pigmen did make it into the game. And so we got these instead. Though even those mobs were removed to make room for zombified piglins instead. So it seems like Mojang can never quite decide what to do with them. Which is a shame, since the idea was that you could even hire these pigmen as bodyguards, which is something Mojang even refuses to do for villagers. By building a structure made out of gold blocks, cobblestone, and a nether reactor core, you could build yourself the so-called nether reactor, which was a feature that only exists in old versions of Bedrock Minecraft. And once you went through all those steps of building it, then what would happen is that you'd get this message telling it was active for generating this massive structure of netherrack around it called the nether spire. And in a version of the game where you couldn't go into the nether dimension actually, this was a solid substitute. Now we've already seen the ice bomb, which was possible, but how about the inverse of that, the heat block? After putting a mix of iron, water, salt, and charcoal into the lab table, we get this unique block, which when placed down, will melt snow layers and ice within two blocks of it, but it gives off no light itself. And funnily enough, the reason this is in the game at all is because it's a reference to the same elements that go inside of the hand warmers. Though, I I don't think I want to put any of these blocks inside of my pockets, just saying. Before you head to the nether, write out a written book and toss it through first, since that'll create this new funky portal. This feature, being part of the infinite Minecraft update, allowed players to create portals leading to 2 billion new dimensions per seed. Which sounds like a gimmick, but if you go through, you can actually find some really cool portals through this. And I'm kind of disappointed that those biomes don't exist in the game, even if it means you have to sift through a bunch of them that just look hideous. Ever since Minecraft 1.7, you haven't been able to get a rose in vanilla Minecraft. But the reason isn't all that serious, it's really just because the rose was eventually replaced with the name Poppy instead. And while texture packs like Vanilla Tweaks let you change this back to the original name, I think it's still a bummer for our iron golems. I mean, they don't even give out villagers flowers anymore. Did you know that you can craft netherite into stairs? Well, sure enough, if you go into the missing dimension of the infinite snapshot, you'll find this secret item hanging around. And this very item will have its special name, the swaggiest stairs ever, which I'm inclined to agree. And really, it just goes to show that while building a netherite beacon is a flex, having a staircase out of these is a whole other level. What you'll notice is that in the education edition, we've got two different kinds of torches. And the first one to talk about is these new colorful torches, which you get by adding these different metal chlorides into the torch crafting recipe, letting us get a blue, green, red, and purple variant. But unfortunately, they don't give off any kind of colorful light source, which I think is a shame, considering that is possible with the RTX features in Bedrock Edition. And instead, if you want light underwater, we've got to talk about our second variant, the new underwater torch. Now, this is something that we obviously can't do in vanilla, and the whole reason it's possible is because we add magnesium to a torch's recipe. And with this, we get a new silver and blue variant of the torch, and that's capable of lighting up as much blocks underwater as a torch does above ground, which might be handy for when you're looking for a place to explode the new underwater TNT. Now, the way that we get this blue block is that we add the sodium element with a TNT crafting recipe. And then, once we do, we're able to ignite this TNT underwater, much like we can above ground. And the reason this is is because pure sodium has a reactive element with water to say the least. As of 2022, there's no longer an inventory in Minecraft, or at least that was the case in the one block at a time update. And now instead of having to worry about inventory management, all of your blocks and items were turned into physical things that you could interact in the world. But blocks weren't the only thing that we could pick up, since if you got up close to a mob, you could also carry one of these around as well. And folks, just about all entities in the game could be picked up, whether that was friendly, neutral, or even hostile. And you could find that even different mobs would have special abilities depending on which one you're holding, almost creating its own meta to which one that you want to have on hand. This mob could have been in Minecraft, but now it never will. See, from the 2017 mob vote, Mojang showed off four designs, with only the Phantom being the one to make it into the game. And according to the developers, the other ones that got outvoted are doomed to never be released in game. So this Kraken mob will only exist in this mod. The Monster of the Ocean Depths, as it was called, is a hostile mob that chases you down, whether you're swimming or in a boat. And if it gets close, it'll pull you in like so. Which sounds scary, but how much worse could this be than a drowned trident? That's true. 
interfere. Now, this might look like a tiny iron golem, but don't get it twisted. This here is the new Agent Mob, which is a special entity meant to teach players how to code. Because if you use the new implemented code builder tool, you can actually give it different sets of commands of what to do. So for example, we coded in this loop of text so that it now builds a bunch of these rings inside of the world. And you can even have it break and place blocks since it has its own 27 item inventory. And while you can see by this list that there's so much that this can do, unfortunately, it can't interact with levers or buttons. So it's still not a replacement for the copper golem, which honestly just feels like a slap in the face for Mojang. But with how many other things you can use to code from this, I guess that makes up for it. Stop making your boats out of wood, but instead make them out of obsidian. No joke, since Mojang thought wood was too fragile, they added in this new obsidian boat instead, which now has the capabilities to withstand anything that comes in its way. Though when it comes to buoyancy, it's not the best. The price you pay for safety, I guess. This is the rarest structure in Minecraft, and not just because it doesn't exist anymore, but even when they existed in the game, these giant brick pyramids were rarer than woodland mansions are today. Though you would have only found them during the in-dev phase of Minecraft, which alone is tough enough to boot up that version. But lucky for us, they did have a specific location that they spawned in. So as soon as you found one, you were still able to share it with your friends. This is a sign, and this is the chalkboard, or rather, chalkboards, since we have three different sizes to choose from. We've got the one by one slate, the two by one poster, and the three by two board. And what's interesting about all of these is that they let us put more text on a board instead of a regular sign. And if you have the largest size, you can type up to 15 lines of text on the same board, which is definitely helpful for giving instructions. But besides that, they work like regular signs. You can walk through them, water or lava doesn't destroy them, the whole nine yards. And with that folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one. All right.